Good morning, everyone. I am happy to be in the same color that the governor's in. Some people said I got the memo, but the governor said, no, you just got the vibe. And, uh, and it's, it's true, we all have your vibe here, governor and the lieutenant governor and the board. Uh, we understand our assignment here at the port. Our assignment at the port is really uh, important. As we all know, it's uh, the lifeline of the not only the island, but the region. And to have our oversight chair now, Senator Amanda Shelton, when she came for the tour uh, with Senator Kanata, I believe, and uh, Senator Lujan. Senator Lujan. Okay. But, but you can always by my side. Always by your side. But you know, they, they were able to see what we've been seeing for the last uh, four years here at the port. Uh, this morning is a celebration of what happens when you have strong relationships, uh, not only with the government, but also the private sector. As you always see Joe Cruz as the chairman of the Port Users Group. Uh, the Port Users Group is there with us every step of the way. And they always they, they don't always get what they want, but they always get what they need. Uh, sometimes we say no, but the no's are far and few, but we try our hard to always strive for a win-win. Uh, this port modernization project is uh, something that we picked up on uh, and this $4.8 million water line project is extremely critical. Uh, there are times when there's a water line break and we have to call on Guam Waterworks and Miguel Berdalio and his team have been very responsive to fix the water line break. But in those instances, uh, we're very grateful to have uh, uh, the captain of the port, Captain Simmons, who not only is our regulator, but is our friend. Uh, he has the authority to shut the port down whenever the Coast Guard uh, and his leadership feels that the uh, port's not safe. That's something we would support also. But because of the fragile water line, it's a 50 year old uh, water line. Whenever there's a water line break, uh, we notify the PD fire station, we notify the, the ship, and the ship puts all the provisions uh, to prepare as if though there would be a fire. Uh, and we had two fire suppressor uh, units that uh, eventually uh, had to be retired because um, of corrosion. And, and I say this because there are so many things that are happening here at the port. And uh, yesterday we had a really good call with uh, Gary Gurubara, our oil DCC, <clears throat> with Senator Bamba and Carol was on the call. Uh, Bureau was uh, tracking, she's still in our nation's capital, stumping for uh, all of Guam. But when we go out to D.C., and I'm sure the governor will share what her conversations are like, we not only advocate for the port, but we talk about the port, the airport, the roads, and the hospital. We talk about all of Guam. And I think this is why the governor and lieutenant governor feel very uh, comfortable to say, no, Rory, go as far and fast as you can uh, to talk to whoever you need to talk to, to talk to them about the conditions of the Grand Tree trains, to talk to them about what the uh, DOD needs to understand that if the port's not ready, the military won't, won't be ready. And those are the kind of things that we've been able to message for the last uh, two years. And that messaging really is through the guidance also of Oil DCC and Mr. Kuwabara. Uh, the governor asked him to fund a master plan uh, to the tune of 1.6 million. And she told uh, Gary Kuwabara that when you fund this master plan for the port, she's gonna make sure that we reach out to customs so that plan can also do a feasibility study for the cargo inspection facility. Uh, she, Governor, also made sure that we take that as an opportunity to look at tariff simplification, to look at uh, how we do business at the port, uh, to how to modernize the port, look at our terminal operating system, look at cybersecurity issues. Governor reached out to Saipan uh, to partner up for this uh, regional resiliency assessment program. Uh, that means that we want to take a look through Homeland Security and CISA what's going to happen if something happens here and what are what are the plans for those um, kind of uh, eventualities and and particularly I'm grateful uh, ladies and gentlemen that we have a governor that every time she talks to people she always talks about how critical it is that the court uh, be to where it needs to be uh, for all contingencies. And along those lines, I want to thank the board employees for uh, being here. It's, I know it's tough to get you away from your desk or out in the yard. It's true. They don't want to leave work, Governor. And when it's uh, Sunday night, they tell me what you've been hoping for, that uh, they're thinking of, I can't wait to come to work uh, on Monday morning. <laughs> and uh, BME and Sons and the uh, designer record, uh, Nancy Macario, 
is thank you everybody for um, all that you're doing. Uh, thank you for putting aside um, your own individual uh, agendas when it comes to what the port needs. Uh, and thank you, uh, Governor, for your leadership. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor is scheduled to be here. I know you would say this as well, that uh, he had a conflict in the schedule at another meeting. Uh, but we kept him on the program because he said he really, really, really wants to be uh, here as well. So we're grateful for his leadership and his support as well. But thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for all your support. Thank you again, Governor, and thank you um, to the people of